Hey, you too. We keep hearing a strange sound coming from the attic. I gotta find out what it is. I know what it is. in the light. <coughs> Sorry. Is it that monster that keeps laughing at me? Yeah, I found a monster. Okay. I think we're gonna move the ladder. Okay. I'm turning off the camera. There it is. See? Even the cat is curious. I didn't give her a hint. There it is. It's been laughing at me from the attic. Every time I watch I'm Still Working do a canning video, I can hear it ever so slightly giggling at me. You know that commercial where the kid is didn't eat breakfast and they ask him a question and the crabby guy goes, you don't know it. Yeah, that's what this thing's been doing to me. It knows I'm afraid of it. Well, today I'm going to face my fears. I bought this two years ago. It's been sitting in the attic. Look at it. it looks like a medieval contraption. Big enough to boil a couple of heads in. It's a beautiful piece of equipment. An all-American pressure cooker. Well, I bought the chicken and I have the jars clean and they're in the dishwasher. There's no turning back now. So I guess I just better get on with it. I have phone of friends on standby. My friends Barely Seen Ranch and Cat's Cradle. They're gonna help me if I need it. But I'm pretty sure I can do this. But I'm telling you, I have been afraid of this thing. I don't think I need to be afraid. I think I just need to get it over with. And you know what, I think when I'm done, I'm going to kick myself in the head because it's going to be so simple. So I'm going to take you along for this ride. Never done it before. And uh, it is what it is. And what you see is what you get, folks. So uh, I hope you enjoy this little trip. Okay. Rick's just getting a shot. This is all the chicken that we got. Um, I was not picky. I bought the chicken that was cheap. Okay. This is for my family in the event that, you know, we want to save money uh, in the coming months with the projected food inflation that may be coming. So, we have approximately 24 pounds of chicken here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to prep it and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it when I pack my jars. And incidentally, we ran to the grocery store this morning and one of the local grocers had boneless chuck roast on sale. Buy one, get one free. So I guess I'll be canning some chuck roast as well. Okay, I finished cutting up my chicken and I trimmed it. I trimmed it really well because I don't want, <clears throat> I don't want all that fat and crap in there so uh, Rick thought it might be interesting to see how much I had to trim off for it to be edible according to me. Um, this is three pounds and 6.4 ounces so a little over three and a half pounds. I paid $1.79 a pound for the chicken which I thought was a really phenomenal price for boneless skinless chicken breast but I paid $1.79 a pound for this 
and it's going in the trash. So, um, somebody's probably going to leave me a comment saying, I can't believe you threw that away. Why didn't you do something with it? Because I'm really busy today. I don't feel like sticking this in my freezer. And really, it's breast meat. It's not good for stock. And that chicken fat isn't going to be good for much else. So, there you have it. I'm getting ready to jar everything up, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, I have put all my chicken in my jars, and I put my lids, and I'm tightening up my rings right now. Now, the one thing, well, a couple of things. There's a teaspoon of salt in the top. You want one inch of head space, which is this thread right here. You don't want anything above that thread. And before you put your salt in, you want to make sure that meat is packed down and there are no air bubbles. You take a a plastic knife, do not use a metal utensil because you run the risk of cracking the jar on the inside. You take this is specifically for canning. And it is an, uh, to, you run it around the inside of the jar and you kind of do this and you get rid of all your air pockets. Now you have to do this when you make pickles or when you pack tomatoes, which I'm going to do in a little while. And, um, and then you, I just press down as I go through there so that any air pockets are released and you don't run the risk of botulism. I did um, simmer my lids a little bit in some water on the, in a pot on the stove. I'm just tightening up all of these rings because uh, I just kind of put them on there with one hand. And then I'm going to put them in my canner. My canner has an inch and a half of water in the bottom as well as about a quarter of a cup of vinegar to prevent any calcium deposits from my water. Now, this thing is monstrous, and I've never used it before, so we're gonna find out exactly how many pints this holds. When you pressure can, it doesn't matter if the jars touch. So you're good there. What is that? Eight. Let me put the other layer there. Oh, there's one of these trays is in the bottom underneath that too. Now I have 20 jars here of chicken. I may have to do another, another course here. We'll see. What? You can't have raw chicken. Well, I guess that looks like I'm going to get 14 pints in here. I don't think you can do that. No. No. Rick says no. <laughs> You're mixed out at 18. Huh? It's not 18. Yeah. It's 14. Is it? There's 8 and 8. Yeah. Oh, that's 16. Yeah, what did I say, 18? Yeah. Oh, 16. All right, we're good. We got the math. My kids aren't around, otherwise I'd ask them. All right. Yeah, public school. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to put the lid on here. And you're supposed to do opposite turn these thumb screws here. And you're supposed to tighten them. Hmm. Something's not right. Maybe I need to tighten it down a little more. Oh dear. Loosen it more. Huh? I don't have something right. That one wasn't loose enough. Oh. Okay, folks, I'm learning. Don't laugh at me. Okay. Now, my friend Michigan Snow Pony, Renee, she has one of these All-American canners. This is um, a gasketless canner. 
as you you know you would be more familiar with the whoops the regular canner that has a gasket in it a rubber gasket this is a metal on metal gasket I have um, read the instruction manual more than once last night once this morning um, You just want to make sure these are nice and tight as well as because it's a metal on metal gasket they did recommend that every three to four um, uses oh that's heavy you um, put a thin coating of petroleum jelly in uh, on the gasket on both the lid and the pot on the inside of the pot otherwise the gasket can run the risk of sticking together and becoming dry and you don't want that so because this has been in my attic for two years almost exactly <clears throat> and because I don't know how often it was used prior to me purchasing it I went ahead and did give it a coat of petroleum jelly just you know we're gonna hedge our bets here so <laughs> next I'm gonna put this on to boil I'm gonna let this vent for 10 minutes then I'm going to put my my weight on at 10 pounds of pressure and I consulted my local information and for boneless skinless chicken breasts I am at sea level I do mine at 10 pounds of pressure for an hour and 15 minutes so 75 minutes so when this is finished venting, I will come back and I will show you what happens next. Okay, our steam vent is visibly venting and I'm going to turn my timer on for 10 minutes. And then when we come back we're going to put the weight on and we're going to let it do its deal. Okay, the timer went off, venting has taken place for 10 minutes, and we're going to put our weight on. I don't know if you can see this. This has three weights, 5, 10, and 15. And the way that's done is the hole is bigger as um, you go down. The 5 the five pound hole is larger than the 10 pound hole and is the 15 pound hole is the smallest one of all. So, what we're going to do now, I need to do it 10 pounds of pressure. Um, oven mitt. We need this oven mitt. I need to fry. I sometimes don't think. Okay, so we're going to put, put our weight on just like that. Now we're going to start to watch the pressure gauge. I am going to turn this down to like medium, five, on my stove dial. I have an electric stove. I am going to have to babysit this to make sure that the pressure remains constant. And you can see that this middle line is the PSI, <clears throat> which is pounds per square inch. Now I want it to be right in here at 10 pounds of pressure, which is where this weight should essentially be keeping it. Have you heard of PE, PSI? No. Tips. Stupid! Stupid! PE, PSI. You're funny. They all think you're funny too. So I'm going to stand here and wait for the pressure to come up and I'm going to maintain it there for 75 minutes. I'm going to set my timer once the pressure gets up to 10 pounds. Okay, 
75 minutes and we turned off the heat and we waited for it to come to zero pressure. We, Rick just took off the weight. It's not that hot. We've unscrewed all of the thumb screws. I'm going to open it up and we're going to see what happened. It smells like chicken. Doesn't it? Ooh. Looks like chicken. I did it. Look at that. Now these need to be removed to a undrafty place. And um hmm. There we go. And they are hot. So let me remove these and take them to where they need to go. And then I'm going to show you what they look like. And then I'll have Rick pan over and show you that while these were processing, not only did I can up 15 pints of Roma tomatoes in their own juice, but behind him is four more pints of chicken and 10 pints of chuck roast that as soon as the canner, I'm gonna put the canner outside for a little while and bring it to a, a cooler temperature. And then I'm gonna start the process all over again. So tonight before I go to bed, I will have a nice amount of canned meat to put in my food stores. And I have to tell you, like I said at the beginning, I'm probably going to kick myself in the head when I finish because it was so stinking easy. And it was easy, folks. It was easy. It's supposed to bubble that much. Hmm? Yes, it's supposed to bubble that much. So I'll be back later to show you what else happened. Okay, here are the results of my day of canning. Now, this is not Sunday, this is Tuesday, and I just wanted to show you, this is, uh, I was up very late Tuesday night, um, and uh, actually was overtired and couldn't get to sleep. So Monday night, I slept like a log, a rock, any inanimate object you want to name. Um, I actually it got 20 pints of the chicken, uh, one of which is in the refrigerator because we had to try it and it's positively delicious. I got 10 pints of the beef chunks, and, and I'll have Rick show you these. There's the beef chunks because I didn't show you when I processed those or put them in or anything, but it was the <laughs> same process. And what I like about this is all that fat goes to the top and you just pick it right out. And here's the chicken. Um, it made its own broth and it fant looks fantastic. The chicken tastes great. Uh, I'm getting ready to do another video using some of the canned beef chunks and we're going to make a, a dish out of it that I usually make with leftover pot roast. And then as if that weren't enough and I'm a glutton for punishment and I realized that the tomato crop froze in Mexico and tomato prices are, are predicted to go through the roof free, um, in the near future, they had the Roma tomatoes on sale for $1.49 a pound, normally $3.69 a pound. So I bought 15 pounds and I did got 15 pints of Roma tomatoes, water bath can these, 35 minutes of uh, in processing uh, per batch. And uh, <clears throat> I'm set for now, and I think that I'm probably going to do a bit more canning because today I went to the grocery store, and because it's Tuesday, we call that Markdown Meat Day um, because tomorrow the new ads come out, and they're trying to clear out their case for their new sale items. I got 20 pounds of uh, pork butt for $25. It ended up being $1.27 a pound, so I'm very happy with that price and I got a couple more flats of jars and we're going to go ahead and, and process the pork as well and the cat is going to get off the table. So that's that, the results and the, the uh, fruits of my labor and uh, I will have these in my pantry and in my stores and I will continue to pressure canned meats 
and I will not be afraid of it anymore. Uh, it was all for naught, and I am, as I said, kicking myself in the head because it was so easy, and I can't believe I made that thing sit up in the attic for two years before I took some action. Laughing at you. And it was laughing at me. It's not laughing at me anymore because I kicked it in the teeth. Don't worry. So uh, that's all for now.